Hey everybody, welcome to Neil Talks. My name's Neil and it's time to talk QI. This week's viewer recommendation is an early one. We're going back to series D. Um, so it's going to be a slightly shorter reaction than normal because we don't have an Excel version to react to. We just have the, the original uh, broadcast length. But I'm going into this one completely cold. Other than the fact that it was recommended to me, I don't know who any of the guests are. And um, I only know the name of the episode, which is Dictionaries. This is episode four from Series D. Let's check it out. Good evening, good evening, and welcome once again to QI. Tonight on the panel, we have four people who look uncannily like someone else. Please welcome Tony Blair, <laughs> Tommy Cooper, <laughs> Ruby Wax, and Alan Davis. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know though I don't know those middle two, so you'll have to tell me how good a an impersonator they are. Ronnie, give us an A. A B please, Rory. A C please. And a D. <laughs> Where's the best place to start writing a dictionary? Uh, well I would say at the A's. <laughs> It seems in lexicography, the art of dictionary writing, they like to start with M. Oh. <laughs> the theory is that they've got their I in by the time they get to A. So they... you mean the M's are probably rubbish? That means they started with the I, then. When I said I, <laughs> I meant E-Y-E, -E, and you thought, uh, yeah, yeah. possibly for comic effect, but if so, <laughs> disastrously, uh, that wasn't what was happening at all. <laughs> it was completely something else. It was one of those laughable misunderstandings, and I used the word laughable quite wrongly. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> anyway, name, if you can, the subject of the three-volume book, whose first volume is entitled The Long Years of Obscurity. The career of Phil Collins. <laughs> I did a show once with Phil Collins, and uh, he did a song called Where's My Hat? And he was wearing his hat throughout. <laughs> <laughs> Is this book about the word obscurity before it got famous? How it was beaten by its adjective father, and then it was the only noun growing up in a house of verbs. And poor old obscurity was stuck inside, suffering from asthma. <laughs> and then one day it entered into a reality TV show, and it became very famous, and it was much in demand and used to describe all the people that leave Big Brother House. <laughs> well, what a nice riff. Is, is it Chairman Mao? It's not Chairman Mao, The Long Years of Obscurity. Yeah. It begins with D. It's got two Ds in it, in fact. That's your clue. All, all that comes to mind is Daniel Defoe and therefore Robinson Crusoe, but... It's about Didcot. It is about Didcot! You're you how extraordinary you knew that. Uh, no, no, we won't have it. We'll have it up the road in Didcot. So they built a station next to the power station you see there, yeah. which is the third worst eyesore in the country. It was a country life thing. Do you know what the first one was? People, public people, Absolutely. working class. <laughs> <laughs> Poorly groomed servants. <laughs> Red player fella. <laughs> if I find out you've been intercepting my mail, I should. <laughs> um, so. It was wind farms. Oh, really? Yeah. But the, the power station was designed What's by wrong the same with guy that Liverpool Cathedral. So. You get five points for the railway and your astonishingly moving story about the early abuse suffered by the, the word obscurity. Um, you also get the telephone number of the therapist. So, um, no, wonderful. Too little too late. Too. Uh, it's a little known fact that the confetti at Princess Margaret's wedding was made up of thousands of didcuts collected by inspectors oh, on so the world. so they're hanging train. chads. Okay. <laughs> not number one on a young girl's wish list. A big white wedding, lots of didcots. <laughs> That particular fact I give you is not so much a fact as a made-up thing. Oh, uh, yeah. It comes from Porky the pie. book The Meaning of Lift, which, oddly enough, was co-written by Douglas Adams and the producer of this programme, and he somehow smuggled it onto my card. Douglas Adams is a producer of QI? Or is the producer of QI friends with Douglas Adams? That was a poorly phrased statement of... Third ugliest, <laughs> second oldest, yeah. always the bridesmaid, dead top. <laughs> <laughs> what? Can't the Boobe people of Bioko do in the dark? See very well. <laughs> I would imagine. Do you know where Bioko is, the island? Equatorial, Equatorial, Equatorial Guinea. Guinea is the right answer. Yeah. Five points, that's very good. 
interest in that sort of bite there. And the okay. boobie make up about 10%. Uh, there are 40,000 of them. Yes, I stayed with the boobies for three years. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, they look so wonderful in their bright colours. It is very hard to wear yellow well, you know. <laughs> Oddly enough, uh, the information we have about the boobies not being able to do this thing that they can't do at night comes from one of the great female explorers of our times. Talk, eat, sing. Walk. The first Fish. one you said. But talk. They can't yes. talk at night? No. Because their talking is mostly gesture. Ah. They oh. can't see what they're saying. <laughs> the great Mary Kingsley, who was the sister of... <laughs> <laughs> but this was a... <laughs> <laughs> Alan's hair in this, this series, man. That's right. He chose to go out and get his front paws over the stem of my canoe and endeavoured to improve our acquaintance, and I had to retire to the bows and fetch him a clip on the snout with a paddle. <laughs> <laughs> if you read the Telegraph obituaries, they're full of those sorts of Aren't people. they wonderful? All retired army officers. <laughs> there was an extraordinary <laughs> Scottish peer who had one of those weird double titles, like Lord Elgin and Duncan. He arrived at a dinner and he looked at the place cards to see who was sitting next to him and he saw his own place card said Lord Elgin and then to see who was next to him he just saw Duncan. Plus one. Oh we'll put him next to him. Uh, did you ever hear Diana Mosley? No, she liked a bit of Wagner. <laughs> she did like Wagner, but she, she liked Hitler. Uh, uh, and um, <laughs> met him many times. Is that a euphemism for being a Nazi? Is, is, is she liked Wagner? 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 You know, his eyes were quite blue. Makes it all right. Quite blue. Uh, one scene never forgotten. <laughs> uh, well, that's all right. I met her, and she said to me, Of course, you never knew Hitler, did you? <laughs> Sexiest woman. There was I first crossed the Gobi Desert when I was 75, and that's and I... when I met Abdul, who was 50 years my junior, but went at it like a rabbit, always on the <laughs> curved like a scimitar. It was. <laughs> um... no. And George Bush, he does a lot of that. He does. Of, you know, he walks walks as if he's carrying two sheep for some reason. <laughs> And uses the odd word merkin. You know, you know what merkin is? But it's pubic wig. wig. It's just a pubic wig. It's yes. a pubic wig. I'm proud to be a merkin. <laughs> <laughs> you know this is an old series when we're making George Bush jokes. He also beats the Cornish for his dislike of tourism, doesn't he? So we will not put up a tourist. <laughs> I don't approve of tourists and tourism. <laughs> war against tourism. Who owns Dartmoor Prison? Prince Charles. You're on oh, sparkling God. form. <laughs> he does. Okay. Yes, it belongs to the Duchy of Cornwall. Duchy of Cornwall. Does he have them all making organic yogurt? <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's a snout baron down there. <laughs> As an ex jailbird, I can tell you that snout is very, very old hat. Very vieux chapeau. What do they call it now? Very vieux chapeau. Just burn. 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 Yeah. yeah. Two's up on your burn. Two's up on your burn. Two's up. I swear I'm getting an erection. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like public school. It's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Two's up, on your burn. Two's up means when you've finished a cigarette, you give it to the guy who's first to say two's up to you. And then they collect about six of those and then they make a new cigarette out of it. Do you think Prince Charles says that to his mum? Two's up on your throne. <laughs> <laughs> Alan, if you were knighted, what would the Queen say to you? Arise. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure she doesn't say, no, I'm sorry, I have to draw the line somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> the knight-elect, Alan, kneels on a knighting stool. What are the it, chances? <laughs> <laughs> never know. Pretty minuscule would be my guess. After he has been dubbed, the new knight stands up. Contrary to popular belief, the words arise, sir, dot, 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 are not used. What's the difference when clergy are knighted, if they happen to be? They kneel on a corgi. <laughs> <laughs> No sword. You can't take a sword to a clergyman. Exactly. No, 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 you'd, you'd take a dagger, Not wouldn't you? Yeah. 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 Or an axe. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Just, just a good war club. But do you know about degradation? And that's when you have your knighthood taken away. The last public one was in 1621, when Sir Francis Mitchell was found guilty of grievous exactions. So when she did Alan Sugar, did he go, you're fired? <laughs> <laughs> and what shape is a raindrop? We're doing a shape that I think would be a, a possible a raindrop shape. A squat doing... oh, sphere. Oh, dear! Nope. It is not a teardrop. I'm going to do another one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we even thought of that one. No? Should I do a cock and balls? 
Perfect circle. Here's the right answer. They are the Peter's favorite. Yeah, but when they're falling, they've got air resistance, and therefore that sphere gets flattened. It seems extraordinary. You'd think when it hit the water, it'd get flattened, but maybe someone will write in and explain, but not to me. Marvelous fact about liquids turning spherical as they fall. Uh, where might you bump into the world's biggest drip? Yes, but, but falling molten metal <laughs> will react differently <laughs> than falling water. The biggest water drip is in a density. cave? It is in a cave. The, 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 the air yes. resistance to weight it ratio right would be different, right. and therefore there would be greater deformation. How big is it? Vast is the answer. <laughs> <laughs> How big is it? Oh, very. <laughs> I find was to quantify its bigness would be doing it a disservice. <laughs> <laughs> Bigly big. The vastly big bigness of the dripping thing. Oh, I would feet, meters, anything. Throw me a f***ing bone for it. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is actually about 20 metres long. Thank you. And the ones that go up are called... Stalagmites. So yeah. We've got a G in because they're in the ground. Stalactites are in the ceiling. I was always taught tights hang down. Anyway. I'm at school again. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Fry, put on the 15 denier and see me in my sleep. <laughs> denier, what's that? It's, it's a unit of sheerness of ladies' it's, underparts. It's, it's... <laughs> After 30 denier, they go into a peak. So I see the higher the denier, the less sheer they are. Yes. I understand. Fry, you oaf, those are I only know about denier <laughs> as, as it pertains to fabric for, like, the... The thickness of like pack and outdoor coat material. So, can you identify the world's biggest well, crash? You want a higher ball. number, but you want a 900 instead of a 600 or something like it's that. It's sort of a tidal wave. It's forced down a narrow inlet against the direction of current. Yes, absolutely right. People surf on them. They do surf on them, and in fact, a man called King from Gloucestershire has like a world record waves, for surfing 7.6 miles. Oh, oh. Him over an hour never mind. And a half Not to go up the seven. Paris had a very good one, it was called Le Mascaré, but they dredged it in the 60s and the bore stopped happening. Now, where is the largest floater under the sun? In the office of the Deputy Prime Minister? <laughs> Out of date political blue jokes. Always the blue whale. One day it will be the answer to something. <laughs> it might be one of the gas giants, Jupiter, Uranus. What's the other one? Neptune? Saturn, Saturn, they're all gas. Saturn is the right answer. Saturn's density is only 70% that of water. Anyway, we'll never go there, at least I won't. Even if I could, I wouldn't. I'd say, no, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get him into Suffolk. <laughs> that is true. The current edition of the Oxford English Dictionary, as it happens, lists some 290,000 sparkling words. If you add in all the proper names which dictionaries omit, estimates of the total number of words in our language exceed 3 million. How many different kinds of plant are there in the world? Is it more than you think? Fewer than you think? Or about as many as you think? <laughs> I can't think. Does that rule me out? <laughs> one. <coughs> Ten. You think it's one it's gonna be it's gonna be one or it's gonna be two billion. <laughs> Fewer than I think. Trees, yes. plants, grass. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> The answer is certainly fewer than anybody ever thought. But almost every single four. plant four. has been named four times. So there are probably only a quarter as many plants as we thought there once were. Vegetables. Maybe as few as 223,000. I've lost interest. Yes, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Who fought whom in the Battle of Culloden? England and Scotland. It was basically an Italian fought with a Polish accent, with a bunch of Highlanders, some Irish, fighting some Scottish Lowlanders, English, led by a fat German from Hanover. It's a Great. very good description of the Battle of Culloden, indeed. Wow. That is... There were more Scots there beating Prince Charles Edward Stuart than there were English. That these national heroes are, yeah. are not from the place that they're supposed to be. William Wallace was from uh, Kenya. His mother was Maasai. No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> just for a second, I was going, I just... wow. <laughs> is this too early for Obama jokes? And the irony is, of course, that the Tories have never been voted for in Scotland for the past 20 years, and the Jacobite was a Tory rebellion. Mm. See, I don't even know what side my ancestors were on, I, but I do know one of my ancestors helped Bonnie Prince Charlie escape to... Did he go to Sky? One of the other Hebrides, maybe? I don't know. Help me out with my, my Scottish history. And also, it was the first battle they were trained to use bayonets for the first time. You couldn't have a war like that in Scotland now. Right, then. Smoking, Ben. 
like Celtic and Rangers. Catholic versus Protestant, essentially. It's yes, that it kind was. of fight. And it goes on to this day. The Will we sports never rivalry learn? in the history of sports. Who knows? Religion. Shit it. Anyway. <laughs> um, and lastly, what do dolphins drink? Ah, they don't, I bet they don't drink anything. Blood. He's right. They drink nothing. Nothing at all. <laughs> but when they haven't eaten enough, then they usually die of dehydration rather than of hunger. Point a hose of fresh water at them, they will drink it. But then they won't eat for two days. They can't distinguish hunger from thirst. Oh, interesting. People say that they are, in fact, smarter than people. But if they were, wouldn't they be saying that? <laughs> Maybe they are. Second equal with minus seven <laughs> are Rory Bremner, <laughs> Phil Jupiters, and Alan Danis. Three ways high. So that's a Ronnie win, then. First time a Ronnie Ancona with 13! Wow! Now I have to check the... Oh, uh, the... Am I going to be able to read those credits? Yeah, I thought it was just John Lloyd. Okay, but, but is John Lloyd friends with... Douglas Adams? That was a very weird episode for me, because I don't know who Rory Bremner is, and I didn't know who he was until the very end of the episode, because they didn't actually say his name, because they introduced him as... Did they say Tony Blair? Which is great if you know that he looks like Tony Blair, but I, I know the name Tony Blair, but I wouldn't be able to tell you what he really looks like, and I don't know who Rory Bremner is. So he was just this random guy on the panel for the entire episode. I've seen Ronnie before. She's great. Very good impersonator. Um, we leaned heavily into her doing uh, Victorian Explorer Woman. That was fun. It's interesting. The early series of this show, they jump around more. The first, the, the, the first topic of the day was the dictionary, but we didn't return to it until we came to general ignorance at the end. But, but the rest of the, the discussion was on completely unrelated dictionary topics. Now, I know every episode isn't entirely about the topic at hand. Um, there's always some tangential stuff and just random other uh, words that start with the letter of the year. But usually there's more on the the theme than there is in these early seasons, which is fine. It's just it, it's just got a slightly different vibe. I don't think I've ever seen a three-way tie before, so that was interesting and novel. Quite interesting. I'm surprised by the low number of plants. I wonder if that's still a real fact. I feel like so many new species of... So many new species. So many new species of animal are discovered. Like that's a new species of dog out in the hall right now. <laughs> Something like twenty new species a day are discovered, and I mean, yeah, it's primarily insect. But I mean, like, if you're finding that many new bugs, and they're so like, insects are often so unique to a particular. Uh, microbiome. I, I have to imagine that plants may be similar. Maybe not. Maybe plants propagate more widely and therefore there's more uniformity and therefore fewer species. But 220,000 feels very low. But then, yeah, I mean, the way plants propagate, they, they scatter their seeds to the wind and therefore they, they spread widely, don't they? Not entirely, but the, the, the whole way they've evolved is becoming very good seed spreaders. And therefore, there may be a generality of adaptation so that those seeds can take root in as many um, climates and environments as, as possible. Anyway, hmm. interesting. Are plants more generalist than animals? Animals are more specialist. Debate, discuss in the comments below. This is early Phil. I don't know if... I'm not sure if I've seen Phil's very first episode. I have to imagine he's been on the show since Series A. But he's very much in prime mocking of Stephen mode. Leaning, leaning into that, that public school thing. But yeah, this was a fun episode. It, it feels short because it is. I'm so used to the XL versions and only watching the XL versions 
that watching one of these early episodes, the biggest jolt is that it goes so quickly, and and it seem it seems rare that they spend a ton of time on a single topic. They they it seems more rapid fire, uh, which does change the 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 energy of the episode a little bit. I'm glad they they started putting out the XLs because. You know, clearly there's a lot of material that's left by the wayside when you're editing down to broadcast length, especially if everything I'm hearing is that the average episode takes two plus hours of filming, you know, editing that down to, to 29 minutes for broadcast, that's a challenge. Um, so if you can include another 15 minutes of good stuff that you had to leave on the cutting room floor the first round through, then uh, you're probably going to... Find some really fun stuff that, that makes those Excel versions that you never saw the first time. Anyway, thank you so much for those of you who recommended this one to me. I'm glad I checked it out. Looking forward to having my morning coffee and watching another episode or two. Um, can't wait for next week where we get to see one of those. And until then, everybody, take care, stay healthy. We'll see you soon. Cheers.